Hi, I am John Starrett, and in this tip, we're going to go over how you can create a deadlock and then also proactively monitor your deadlock by using the default system health extended event. So in this demo, we're going to have two separate sessions that are going to be running concurrently. First, we're going to have our first session here, and then we'll actually have our second session. So to start, we're going to go ahead and create two separate tables with a single column in them. And then we're going to go ahead and insert three rows each into both tables. So now that we have some data, we're going to go ahead and start our first explicit transaction. So we're going to go ahead in session one, we're going to go ahead and update test table one to where we're going to update all the rows and set column one equal to five. So in our second session now, we're going to go ahead and begin an explicit transaction here, and we're going to update all of our rows in test table two and set the column equal to one. So currently right now we have two sessions, session two holding locks on the test two table, and our first session over here, we're going to be holding locks on our test table one here. So let's go back over to our first session. So we haven't committed yet, so we're still holding our locks in both sessions. Now we're going to go ahead and say we want to update test two table and set all the columns equal to six. So this statement is currently being blocked by our session two because we haven't committed our transaction that's running here. So we would have to either commit or roll back here first in order to continue with our update here. So this is known as blocking. Now when I flip back over to session two, if I was to run this update statement across our test one table, we would end up having a deadlock now because we're going to have two separate sessions that are each going to be blocked on each other that aren't willing to give up a resource. So when I run this statement over here, Remember, in our first session, we have this update that hasn't been committed, so it's still running. This is going to force us to have our deadlock. So here we're going to see that we committed over here, and our deadlock victim actually ended up being our first session here. So this is how you can easily build a demo to quickly enforce a scenario of creating a deadlock. So now that we have successfully created our deadlock, let's go ahead and take a look at the default system health extended event so you can leverage this to be proactive with monitoring your deadlocks. So by default, when you install SQL Server 2012 or 2014, you'll see a system health extended event that's running behind the scenes. Let's go ahead and open the event file. So at first glance, you're going to see all the different types of events that were captured with the default system health extended event. Today, we're mainly focused on deadlocks, so we're going to go ahead and filter this. So we're going to go ahead and grab the name field, and we're going to say when the name contains XML, and then we're going to go ahead and apply this and add our new filter. So doing so, this is going to filter everything out except for our deadlock reports. So we ran this a couple of times to warm up the demo and to have multiple deadlocks that are here. We're going to go ahead and look at our last deadlock. So when we do that, you're going to see your deadlock XML report. This is going to show you a lot of helpful information for troubleshooting your deadlocks. It's going to go ahead and show you the statements that we're running at the time of our deadlock in each session. And it's also going to give you your resource chain. So as expected through our demo, we ended up having two exclusive locks to where each session was blocked by each other, which forced our deadlock. And you'll also even get some great helpful information about the sessions too that can help you with troubleshooting your deadlocks. So for example, we're going to see here that we have our application that was used by our session in the deadlock. You're going to see where the session came from here. 
you're going to see who connected and was involved in the session for the deadlock. And you'll even also get the isolation level of the query that was used in the deadlock. So all this information together can be used to help you do some code tuning or index analysis to help you troubleshoot and be proactive with resolving your deadlocks.